Thanks so much for sitting down. A couple of years ago, we had a conversation about the attitude we should have as we approach the Bible, meaning that we shouldn't live our, our life with you know, trying to question the Scripture. Mm -hmm. We should evaluate our own lives mm -hmm. as we submit our life to Scripture and we view it as the highest authority mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. because it's the revelation of who God is. Mm -hmm. But even in that, I, I think that there's something more that needs to be compounded on top of that. Not only that we need to have this attitude of humility as we approach the truth, but also I think just the practical question of how should I even study the Bible at all? I think there's a lot of people that have potentially a superficial relationship with God because they have a shallow relationship with His Word. They've been encouraged to pursue a depth in God's Word, but maybe they're just wondering, well, how, how can I do that? And so I'm just wondering from your both professorial and pastoral perspective, what's your counsel for someone that wants to be a studier of God and not just a studier from an academic perspective where they fill themselves up with knowledge, mm -hmm. but uh, they're filling themselves up with the wisdom that comes with God, which also I think necessarily includes meditating on scripture, praying the scripture, and uh, even a community where you study the scripture together and sharpen each other's lives. Well, I think it needs to start with knowing how desperately we need God's word feeding our souls and our minds and guiding our lives. If we don't start with a desperation, realizing that I will be a complete fool without the word of God guiding my life, I won't have the kind of motivation I need. And then the second thing I think we need to come to grips with is the biblical illiteracy in the American church in particular, which is odd because I think most Christians would say, if they've been a Christian any length of time, I think I know the Bible pretty well. Yeah. But when you actually start asking them questions, that's basic Bible knowledge, they don't. Yeah. And the fact is, I, I believe most Christians spend more time on social media than they do in the Bible. And they spend more time on things that don't feed your soul than, than the Word of God. And so we just need to come to grips with the fact that the Bible, the, the media will tell us that we're a bunch of Bible thumpers, but most of us aren't even Bible readers with any regularity. And so we need to know how desperately we need it. And then we need to be honest about how much we really are Bible saturated. Yeah. We'll never have biblical discernment without knowing the Bible. We can't live out the Great Commission or the Great Commandment to love God and, and others as we, as we love ourselves unless we know what that even means. And we won't know who God is, who we are, what love is, what a meaningful life looks like apart from God's word. So we need desperation for it, honesty about how much we really are in the word, and then get after it with simple daily regularity that we become men and women of the word as we become friends with the Bible, realizing that it takes work. Yeah. We're, we're talking about a very different culture in a very different time in history and one of the challenges of the Bible, one of the greatest challenges, is one of the great blessings too, in that it's not just these propositions drop from heaven, these wisdom statements, although there are some of those in the Bible. It's God's record of Him relating to real people in real times, in real places, which means we need to do the hard work of entering into that, those contexts where He's meeting with people and understand it in that context as the story of the Bible unfolds. Yeah. And so we can't just parachute in wherever we, we may want to feel like going in that yeah. day, unaware of where we are in redemptive history and think we can understand it. And so, so we've got to be devoted to it in a simple daily faithfulness, but aware of the overarching story the Bible is. You wouldn't read any other book just jumping in wherever and think you could understand it. And so to both have a micro and a macro understanding of the Bible is so important that you understand the parts in light of the whole and the whole in light of the parts. You can't disconnect those, which is why we need to be grounded in good exegesis of passages, drawing the correct meaning out. Maybe but define that word just yeah, in case it, it, know. It, it just means to draw out, the right yeah. meaning out, right? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean putting meaning in there. It's it's. It's pulling meaning out of a passage of scripture that's intended to be pulled out of there, not with fanciful. Which means you're not asking the question, what does this passage mean to me? Right. You don't rush to yeah. that. You want to yeah. get there, yeah. 
but you want to get there patiently. Yeah. And, and patience may be my biggest concern, both in spending time in the Word, and yeah. then once you're in it, immersing yourself in it, meditating on it, memorizing it, mulling it over prayerfully, worshipfully, and, and spending time in the Word like a friend you're getting to know, yeah. always on a character of God hunt, saying, how does this point me to Jesus? How does Jesus answer the question that's raised here, the problem presented here? Yeah. And, and, and so you learn the scriptures according to Christ, and then you learn Christ according to the scriptures. Yeah. And so you do good focus study in passages, but also working hard to be aware of where this passage, mm. passage is in the grand redemptive history we find in the Bible. Yeah, that's so helpful. Like even, let's just say practically speaking, someone's coming to you, you're a pastor, professor, you teach the Bible almost every single day. But what is your personal study you know i've heard you say before that you sing a hymn in the morning because mm -hmm. you i think you told me you wake up grumpy that's right you know so definitely what are those things that you do to uh, our souls are meant to eat yeah so what do you do just from a morning perspective throughout the day what do you do with your wife what does that look like yeah i think it's important to realize you don't miss something until you're really familiar with it and so we cannot miss the word so some people if they don't exercise, they really feel the, the absence of that. If they don't spend time with their boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse, they really feel the absence of that. Until we become well acquainted with and the Bible becomes a regular part of our lives, it can feel like it's unimportant because we just haven't become so accustomed to being part of our life that we can go without it without feeling the effects of that. And the effects often aren't felt until some time goes by and we see the erosion of our souls and our biblical discernment or our wisdom. But to make the Bible a regular pattern and as something we, we take more seriously than physical food. I remember when I was in college, consistent time in the Word was just so hard for me to get to the point of, of having that. And I said, all right, if I really believe spiritual food is more important than even physical food, I'm not going to take any physical food until I've taken spiritual food that day. And I disciplined myself to do that. And it was hard. There were days where I, w I would get up late, I have to rush to class, and I wouldn't let myself eat because I wanted to spend time in the Word first. But after about six or eight months of regular being in the Word, it actually started to take less discipline. And I, I started to long for it. I started to miss it if it wasn't there. And, and so I don't do that anymore. I, I'll eat before I take spiritual food. But, but it, it was almost necessary for me to, to have that sort of imposed discipline to get to the point where I even miss the Bible when I didn't spend time in it. But then when it became part of my life where I, I saw how helpful it was but by just setting time apart with the Lord like that, so important. So I just read my Bible. Sometimes I'm reading through the Bible in a year. Sometimes I'm settling down in a, a portion of it. Sometimes I just feel like I need to be refreshed by a certain section of the Bible. But I, I want to have it be regular time in the Word that's prayerful, but that's worshipful, which is why I sing. I mean, yeah. I'm not a good singer. And sometimes I'll make up a tune of a, a hymn I have in there that sounds horrible. But, but unless my affections are expressed, as I take in the word and as I pray, something's really short-sighted in, in my approach to the Bible. Because the Bible should lead me to God. I should be on a character of God hunt. Who are you, God, mm -hmm. as I read his word, wherever we are in the word. And, and so I find greater intimacy with him as I find Christ, which is ultimately mm -hmm. what the scriptures are all about. Mm, it's helpful. And just maybe just one final thing. How does that study in God's word shape and fuel your prayer life? You kind of already touched on it, but how do you pray the scripture? When you're reading something, do you go, God, help me to be this man? You know, how yeah. does that look for you? Yeah, prayer is a battle for me. I think it is for a lot of people because I think prayer requires great faith. Most everything we do in the Christian life has some residual benefits socially, personally, emotionally, singing, time with people. Mm -hmm. Even studying the Bible can make you an educated person, right? You can understand Western culture. Otherwise, you can't. But prayer, if God isn't real, man, that's stupid. Yeah. Just talking to the ceiling. And so it really tests our faith and requires patience. And so 
Approaching the word prayerfully is massive. So I go into it and say, Lord, open my eyes. Give me a receptive heart to, to what you have for me in your word this morning, today, whenever I go to it. And throughout, I'm praying, Lord, I don't understand this, or I have no idea how this might be helpful to me or anyone else. Would you help me to be patient and continue to put deposits of your word into my heart, trusting that it'll have benefit, even if I can't see how that is now? And, and then so I prayerfully and then come out of it and say, all right, Lord, how does this engage my life? How should this bring conviction of sin? How should this help me to see you differently? And, and ask him over time, especially, not just impatiently today, this needs to apply to my life, but over time, how do I know you better? How do I have greater intimacy with you when I understand in Leviticus how much you hate sin yeah. and how much blood sacrifice is required to approach you because of our sin in light of your holiness? And these sorts of things where you can read and say, this is just weird. But say, no, Lord, give me patience and grow in my knowledge of you and my intimacy with you as I understand who you are in your word yeah. and who I am before you. Mm. Well, Eric, that's so helpful. I think, you know, both those elements of, the Bible, you know, and prayer are obviously so important in our life. And even to your own point that many people, culture claims we're Bible thumpers, but the church predominantly at large is biblically illiterate. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to both not just reach the people around us, but change and transform our own hearts through God's spirit, we need to be those who love the word and who end up missing it when it's neglected. So Eric, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your help and perspective in this regard. You're welcome.